What's up everybody? I hope you're doing well. So it's been exactly two months now since I made the move from San Jose to San Diego, California, and there have been some aspects of moving my practice that have been quite surprising. Some are pleasant surprises and some have been challenging surprises. So I thought it might be helpful to share some of those both positive and challenging surprises that have come up along the way so far since moving my practice two months ago. So if you're interested in hearing about that, then stay tuned. Welcome to Private Practice Skills. I'm Dr. Marie Fang, psychologist in private practice. I post videos offering tools I learned the hard way about starting and growing private practice so that you don't have to. And this is is now the fourth edition of starting my private practice, so I'll be sharing those with you today. At the time of this recording, it's been exactly two months since I made the move to San Diego. Now, the first three or four weeks or so after moving, I just kind of coasted in my practice, meaning I didn't proactively do anything related to starting my practice in San Diego, building it here. I just kept seeing whatever existing clients wanted to continue meeting with me and, you know, adjusted to moving to a new place because it's a whole thing. Then around three weeks in, May hit and it felt like a flip switch switched on in my brain, I realized I needed to start, you know, making my practice happen here in San Diego. Now I've shared some bits about that journey in previous videos about the kind of logistical steps that I've taken to kind of get my, you know, fictitious business name set up and all of that in San Diego and also what my marketing strategy is here in San Diego. So I've linked to those videos below if you're interested in watching those. So now it's been about five weeks since I started slowly marketing my practice here in San Diego and there have been a few few surprises that have come up and I'm going to get into both the positive and more challenging surprises, but let's start with the more challenging ones. Now the first surprise in theory shouldn't have been surprising, but it was. I thought I knew this about myself. Nonetheless, I was surprised. And that's that I'm just as insecure as I ever was about starting a private practice. Yeah, me, uh, Marie Fang, starting her fourth private practice after three prior successful private practices. And also, oh yeah, by the way, who has this entire business where she teaches therapists how to successfully market their private practices. I don't know why I'm talking about myself in the third person, but it just seems like I maybe shouldn't be insecure about this anymore, but I definitely am. The inner dialogue that I was having with myself as I was starting to market my practice here was, you know, yeah, I know that these strategies definitely work, but Will they work for me this time? What if they don't? Pfft, Marie. Yeah, more on that later. Challenging surprise number two is that this process has felt pretty isolating for me. Again, should I have been surprised? I don't know, but I was surprised. The part that's been most isolating in particular is having difficulty finding therapists who relate with the way that I like to design my private practice such that it aligns with my values. So I've been reaching out to my networks of therapists, trying to connect with folks who are similar to me in different ways, whether it's in our specialty or how we run our practice or who I just think are cool people for whatever reason. And I've been finding this theme that a lot of people particularly don't relate with my desire to have a part-time private practice as well as my desire to have an exclusively cash pay private practice. Now, I wanna be clear that I think there's absolutely nothing wrong with having a full-time private practice, accepting insurance, and anything else about having a private practice, but I also think it's more than okay to have a part-time private practice and have a cash pay private practice. But it seems that not everyone is in agreement with that statement, or at the very least, it like rubs people the wrong way when they hear that that's how I do my private practice. With that said, I have been able to find a lot of folks who do connect on those values, and that's been really, really helpful. So in time, it's been successful, but that was just an initial roadblock that was surprising. Challenging surprise number three, with moving my practice is that building local SEO without a physical office address is harder than I thought it was gonna be. Now, I always figured it would be at least a little bit harder to build local SEO without that physical office address where you can see clients in person, but I never actually had to you know, exercise that challenge because I've always had a physical office location and right now I do not. 
And as it turns out, it's harder than I thought it was gonna be to build that local SEO. Now that doesn't mean that building local SEO isn't possible when you're working virtually from home, but it is more challenging. One strategy that I'm going to start implementing to try to overcome this challenge is I'm gonna to try to connect and network more with local therapists and see if we can kind of cross link to each other's websites appropriately and sort of organically. The hope is that by cross linking to each other's websites when everyone kind of is located in a similar area and talks about San Diego and all of these things is that it could signal to Google hey, Marie probably is operating in San Diego specifically, but I'll report back if I have any updates on how building local SEO is going. Now let's shift gears and talk about some of the more pleasant surprises that have come with moving my practice to a new city. And the first pleasant surprise is it's reinvigorated my interest in my practice. The last four years or so, I've kind of been coasting a bit with my practice between the pandemic, having two kids in two years, and you know, building private practice skills out of nothing. I haven't been focusing on my practice itself that much. I've just kind of let it coast on, you know, the existing marketing strategies that were already there. And now that I'm starting my practice kind of over a little bit from scratch, it's really reinvigorated how excited I am about, you know, the passions I have, the values I have around what kinds of folks I like to work with and how I want to help people, what kind of impact that I like to make in my therapy practice specifically. So that's been a really pleasant surprise and I've gotten really excited about my practice again. Not that I wasn't excited before, I've always really enjoyed it, but it kind of has a new energy to it that I'm enjoying. And that leads us to the second pleasant surprise that's come with moving my practice and that's remembering just how much I enjoy marketing. Now I preach this from my course all about marketing and again, should I be surprised? Nonetheless, I was. <laughs> that when you build a practice that aligns with who you are and your passions and values, and you choose a marketing strategy that fits with your skill set and your giftings, marketing is enjoyable. Now, there are certainly aspects of marketing that feel a little bit more tedious or aren't like the thing that I'm, you know, jumping out of bed in the morning to get done. But Overall, for the most part, my marketing strategy is something that I'm really excited about. Now, lest you think that, you know, I'm just some, I don't know, marketer or person who's unique in that I enjoy marketing, that's not true. It's just that I've aligned my marketing with my values, aligned my practice with my values. So when I go tell people about my practice, I'm excited about it because I'm really excited about the work that I do, the ways that I can help people. And the third way that I've been pleasantly surprised with moving my practice is it's working. Now, the first three weeks or so of, you know, actually putting forward marketing efforts, I heard crickets. There was no interest. I mean, my website wasn't even showing up on Google search results at all because I got a new domain name. So I had no SEO power at all and people just didn't even know who I was or that I was here. But in the fourth week, I scheduled three intakes and it's been taking off from there. Now, again, imposter syndrome, I wondered whether this was gonna work at all, but even in my confident state on my best day, I figured it would take like two to three months for my marketing strategy to start like really kind of kicking in and ramping up, but I've been pleasantly surprised that, you know, it's been picking up speed just about a month into marketing. So that's been really reassuring to see. And then of course, the folks that are contacting me that I'm getting to work with are people that I really enjoy working with who just align so well with my niche, my passions and my values and this sense of like, oh yeah, I can help you with that. Oh, it's the best feeling. I love that feeling. So overall, eight weeks into moving and about five weeks or so into actually trying to market my practice, I'm seeing that my marketing strategy is starting to work. And in general, overall, those initial challenges that I described at the beginning of the video, I feel like I've mostly overcome we'll see at least it feels that way today now of course if there are new challenges and hurdles that pop up along the way in the months to come i will certainly circle back and keep you posted about those as well and before we close i'd like to thank therapynotes.com for sponsoring this video therapy notes is a practice management system that covers all of your needs related to your practice from scheduling to notes to billing and they also have a hipaa secure telehealth platform if you're interested in checking out therapy notes you can get two months to try it for free with no commitment just by clicking the link in the description of this video well i hope you found this video helpful whatever phase of starting or moving your private practice 
you might be in, or maybe you just like hearing the ups and downs of a private practice therapist. Let me know in the comments what some of your biggest hurdles have been related to either starting or moving your practice so that other folks can glean from your experience as well. And until next time, from one therapist to another, I wish you well. Trash truck, trash truck, it's a trash truck driving by. They don't know that I'm filming, they don't know that I'm filming. I waited for the leaf blower to finish before I film. And now with the trash truck. <laughs>